Hi everyone, welcome back to From the Peanut Gallery. Today you get to see my face and not just my hands. And we are going to do my Q1 reading wrap up. So, um, let's see. As of today, which we're already in Q2, um, today is the 10th, April 10th. Um, I have read 17 books. And according to Goodreads and my challenge, I am two books behind. So we need to we need to fix that because I want to hit my goal and I don't want to be behind. And if we can get ahead, well, we're ahead, then we don't have to stress out at the end of the year. So um, in Q1, we read, let me see here, 15, 15, what, 14 books? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I can math, y'all. I really can't math, but that's fine. So um, I'll just kind of quickly go through them as fast as I can um, so that we're not here all day. Um, I did read Furia by Yamil Sayed. Syed Mendez, and I don't know if I rated this book. Oh yes, I did. Okay, so I gave it a three rating. This was part of one of the TBC Nation book club um, book, and I think I finished it like early in January. I gave it a three. It, it was pretty good. Um, it's about a um, Argentina. Yes. It's a young adult book based in Argentina and it's about this girl who's finishing high school and she loves soccer and plays soccer and she's really good at it. She's trying to go pro and um, her brother is also doing the same as well as you know other children within the area but um, there's a lot of gender norms and things that she has to fight through. Um, not only within her family, but also the world and everything. So it's a pretty interesting read. I think I did that one audiobook version. Um, and then I read Una Out of Order by Margarita Mont Montemore. Yes, I have my laptop to help me cheat here. Um, and that one I gave three stars. It was it wasn't bad. Um, it's basically about this woman who I think on her like 21st birthday or something like that, her birthday, she was born on like New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, around I think New Year's Day. And on her 21st birthday, she at midnight, she gets jumped into like a random year in her life ahead in the future um and every year on the first this happens and it's not consecutive it's out of order hence the title um and so yeah it was okay it wasn't bad um again i gave it three stars so it, it wasn't bad but i also didn't love it so if we're talking about books that I did love, the next book that I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this was one of the books, I literally live across the street from the library and I've been there like twice and I've been here for like a year and a half now. And I really should probably utilize it more. Um, but they were doing one of those outside like like book sale things that they do. And I literally bought this book for a dollar. Cause I was like, I know that's on my to be read list and like, why not? And so I bought it and it was like the first hard bad, hard, not hard back. It was paperback, but like a first physical book I've read in I think over a year because I had just been reading everything through the Kindle or doing audio. So, that part I loved because I did not realize how much I absolutely missed reading from a physical book. Um, I still love my Kindle to death, but like having a physical book is definitely nice to switch it up and have again. 
Um, but yes, I loved this book. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. Let me just check my rating. Yeah, this book got five stars. I loved it so much. It was so good. Um, it's, I, I think it's classified as a historical fiction. Um, I don't entirely know where to see those details from here. Yeah, it's historical fiction. And it's about an actress, a Hollywood movie icon, but like back in like the earlier days. Um, and she basically finds and hires this journalist um, to basically tell her story to. And she said, when I die, you can tell my story. And these are the answers to the questions that everybody has been asking for years. Um, and she's had seven husbands uh, and they basically go through her life. And it was so good. I loved it so much. And all I'm gonna say is that everybody needs to read it. I actually, it's like old Hollywood. Um, so I gave it to my sister because I feel like she'd really like it. And she hasn't read it yet but I want her to read it so that I can talk to her about it and know her thoughts on it because so good, so good. So <laughs> then I went into um, the Divergent trilogy. So <laughs> I literally read all of them back to back. That's, that's just what I did. January was a good month for books and then it fell off, I think. Um, so yeah, we read Divergent. I think I had, I bought one copy from the book sale from the library across the street. And then I bought, I had the other one and I don't remember which one it was. It was either the first or the second one. I don't know which one I owned and which one I bought. But either way, I read both of those um, hardback or paperback. Um, physical form and then I read the third one Allegiant um, via Kindle like I said really just read them back to back to back didn't really give any time I remember loving the first book I did give it a four stars um, but I loved the first book and then the second book I think I liked it and I think I gave it four stars as well yes and then by the third book, and I don't know if it was because I was just over it or I just was not, like it was just too much at once. <laughs> I gave the third book two stars. So I think part of that two stars is because the fact that I read, I read them back to back to back to back with like no break in between. And I think that affects like, That affected how I felt about the book. I think it was just too much at once. It's like when you binge something and you don't really have time to digest it and you kind of need that like space from it before you can get back into it. Um, yeah and then I because th I think I just got annoyed with the character. By the time the third book came around I was just annoyed with the characters. Like I I was just like okay are we like let's wrap this up. <laughs> like, what happens? I was surprised by the ending though because I did not expect, I wasn't like surprised by the ending, but I was slightly surprised by something that happened at the end. And I don't wanna give it away. I know there's movies and whatever, but yeah. It was good, but then I was over it. And I know that there's like a fourth book and she, who, um, Veronica Roth, who's the author, it's called Four and it's, seems like it's the same story but from a different character's perspective uh which is okay I guess I'm not a big fan of that and I think it's more <laughs> I think um Twilight when she made that like additional book that was from Edward's perspective and I was dumb and I decided to listen to it um, it felt, it feels very lazy to me. Like, you're an author, this is your job. 
like you should you're like you're you're like the pro and like writing the same story from somebody else's perspective it just seems lazy because oh, you already have the whole story there you just have to create a little bit more emotion from that person like it's just it's lazy to me and i wasn't a fan of it so by the time the third book came around and i read it i was over the characters and I contemplated reading the fourth book, and then I said, no, thank you. I think I'll pass. And I wanted to, to watch the movie, and I think I did like the first one, and then I was having trouble trying to watch the second one, and then I was just over it. I was just over the whole thing. <laughs> so yeah, first two books got a four, and then the third book got a two. <laughs> you know, it happens. And then I forgot to mention who the author was for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So that was Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I think she's the one who does Malibu Rising as well, which is also a really popular book. I have not been able to get my hands on that yet. Uh, I read Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I don't know what I gave this book. This book was written by Chanel Miller and it's about her experience as the victim from the Brock Turner case. Um, I live in California, so I kind of remember it being a thing and being talked about when I was younger, um, but I don't know if it went across the nation. Um, yeah, she was sexually assaulted, and so she basically tells her story of what happened and how her life was after that and has been since. Um, I gave it a three. I did do this one as an audiobook and it was kind of tough to get through, which is to be expected. Um, so yeah, it was tough to get through. I definitely had to kind of sit down and make myself listen to it because I did want to like read it right I did want to finish the book um, it was just a tough topic and then um, it was just I don't know I think it's because audiobooks I just don't always do so well with audiobooks I feel like things are very slow in audiobooks but that's just me I think um, there was something else I wanted to say about this book and I don't remember what it was but yeah, I give it a three. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I actually had to, I love how you can see my shadow. Um, I, distractions. I, I had to pick and choose when I listened to this book um, because I would listen to it and then I would go to bed and then I would have nightmares from having listened to the book because it was just the topic was on my brain so i decided <laughs> to either listen to it earlier in the day or when like i was gonna be with other people um or like do something kind of cheerful before <laughs> going to bed and distracting myself with something else it was i think that was also part of the struggle but yes Okay, moving on. I then read, or I think I listened to this one too, The Dictionary of Lost Words, and this is by Pip Williams, and this was another TPC Nation book club book, and it's a, I don't think it's, maybe this is a historical fiction as well. I gave this four stars because I liked the premise. I think I would have liked it more if I physically read it versus audiobook. Um, yeah, so this is a historical fiction as well, and it's basically about the uh, missing words of like the Oxford English Dictionary. So a lot of, and, and the main character who the story talks about, um, she collects words in a way, and they tend to be more like like women words, right? So like things that are more feminine or that like women would say versus what men would say um, and how those words would be kind of like 
disregarded or not put into the dictionary and, and all of those things. So I kind of just talked about that, which that was pretty interesting. I really liked it. I think if you're like a reader, this is definitely a book that you'd be interested in. Um, I then read Yes, Please by Amy Poehler and I gave it two stars. <laughs> it was an audiobook, and I think I got through it in one day. So it wasn't a terrible book, but it was also, I don't know, like I've had, I think I've read other, what is this technically a biography? Um, that were better like it was funny but it was just that I guess I don't know I like I said I got through it in, in a in a day like I literally listened to it in like one city right so it was one of those books that I could put on and like clean the apartment and like do some planning and you know take care of things around the house type of thing um so that's what I did like I said, it was funny at some parts. She talked about Parks and Rec, which I am a Parks and Rec fan. Because <laughs> I'm a Parks and Rec fan because so many people told me that I was April Ludgate. And I was like, I don't know who that is. Who's April Ludgate? And why are you telling me that I am her? And they would say that my personality was like her and that we looked kind of and so I was like, okay, I just need to watch this show and see who this is. So I started watching the show because of that. And that's how I became a Parks and Rex fan. And um, prior to me watching the show, Shane had gotten me one of those like pop doll things. I don't know what they're called. The ones that you keep in the boxes and they're like short and stubby. Um, yeah, so I, had, I, I have that in my office. But I watched the show and I was like, yes. I am April Ludgate, and before watching the show, I didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I am taking it as a good thing because I care, but I don't care at the same time. And I, that, yes, she is me and I am her. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she did kind of reference some of that as well, and she just talked about like her life and things. Uh, and then I also listened to Red, White, and Royal Blue, and this book is a romance and I think this might uh maybe not no I guess not um so this is about like the first son and um one of the sons from the royal family and just about their friendship and relationship and how it goes from I think it's what is it enemies to lovers trope um and I think I gave it four stars I actually really enjoyed it it was pretty good and um yeah that's pretty much all I have to say about that one um <laughs> I don't remember this book all that much so the next book that I read I think I read this one Um, it was called, maybe I did this on audio, 99% uh, Mine, so another romance. I'm not going to lie, I've been reading a handful of romances, okay? Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, it's called 99% Mine, and it's a romance, and I don't entirely remember what it's about. So it's by Sally Thorne, and we're going to... See what it's about because I don't remember and maybe that's why I got three because I was like it's a romance and it was cute but it wasn't that memorable. So Goodreads says Darcy Barrett has undertaken a global survey of men. I don't remember this book at all. <laughs> I, like what did, did I read this? I, I read this I just don't remember it. So it sounds like um, their grandmother passed. Oh, I do remember this now. Okay, I remember it now. So uh, her grandmother passed away. They've inherited her and her brother have inherited a house, and a family friend um, has been contracted, uh, like a family friend in the sense that like her and her brother were friends with this guy. Um, he was contracted to do the repairs on the house because the grandmother said in her will this house is going to go to you two but 
you have to fix it up and then sell it. Like you can't, you can't, can't keep it. You can't like you need to fix it up and then you need to sell it. So their friend from childhood, um, has been in the construction business, whatever. He's the one who does the work on it, and then um, her brother lives like somewhere else so he has to fly in if he's ever around and then she's the one who's actually like on site in there um she's planning to just kind of like leave and not really be a part of the renovations but then ends up staying and then you know whole um love and everything happens it was okay it was okay um i did a lot of audiobooks maybe that's why i'm not i go through audiobooks more slowly than i do I guess the technical term would have been I go through audiobooks slower than I do uh, physical books, I think. Uh, so then I did The Good Neighbor, which is about Fred Rogers, and I think I gave that a three. I did give that a three. And it was good ish. Talked about Fred Rogers, which was interesting. Um, one thing that really annoyed me it was so repetitive. It was so repetitive. And I was like, I, I heard Fred Rogers was a nice guy. Fantastic. He really was passionate about his show. I get it. I don't need you to tell me that every chapter. I really don't. I don't need you to tell me that. And I also don't need you to, like it literally, it wasn't even like they were telling you in like a different way. I felt like it was the same sentence. And I was like, I heard the past thousand times you told me I heard um so that part was <laughs> was really annoying but it was interesting and I did enjoy kind of like hearing about and learning about Fred Rogers and his life and how he met his wife and you know I didn't know if he had kids or not apparently he had two sons um and just kind of hearing and going through all of that so that was interesting I gave it three stars I then read Honey Girl, um, which I think is probably technically a romance. I really liked that book. And I gave it four stars. I identified with like her. So she is a, she just got her PhD. She's trying to get a job in the field. She's an astronomer. She's trying to get a job in the field. She's having difficulty getting the job. She's going through this like kind of, mm, I would say a crisis a little bit. Um, she grew up with a very strict military father. Um, and so she, she calls her dad, um, what, what, what is, what does she call him? Like a military name, captain, she doesn't call him captain. General, I don't think she calls him general. I don't know, whatever his title is in the military, that's what she calls him, um, which is kind of cute, but then also kind of tells you how their relationship is and like how she grew up. Uh, but yeah, so she grew up with like, she was told she was going to get her doctors and he wanted her to be like an actual doctor and she like rebelled a little bit and was like, no, I'm going to do this instead. And I'm still going to get a doctorate, but I'm not going to be the doctor that you think I'm going to be. Um, so yeah, so she basically talked about how like she's always had a plan da, 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 and like now her plan's kind of falling apart and she's like freaking out about that she's having struggles um and her celebratory graduation gift was to go to vegas with a couple friends and of course something happens in vegas that then you know also becomes a thing and so yes i liked it a lot and it was nice <laughs> to be able to identify with that like the goals and the trying and you've done all the work but you can't get what you're trying to get and it's just like things aren't falling into place like you thought and hope are so yeah that was a good book i haven't been saying the authors of these people i'm obviously very bad at this i am so sorry this one was by morgan rogers 99 percent mine was by sally thorne red white and royal blue was casey mcquiston um 
The Good Neighbor was by Maxwell King. And I think I've done everybody else. Okay, last book that I read in quarter one was The Four Winds. And I actually had the physical copy of this book thanks to Shane's mom. She let me borrow it. And I gave this four stars. I learned about the Dust Bowl in school and I don't remember much about it. And so it was, this is a historical fiction book, maybe I've been reading a lot of historical fictions and a lot of romances. Um, it's a historical fiction book about basically this woman who then talks about her family within it, uh, but about the Dust Bowl era and the depression. So it was really interesting to hear about all of that because I think I remember learning about the Dust Bowl in like elementary school. And again, I don't remember anything from it. So it was interesting to read a book that I'm sure not all of it was true because it was fiction, but that talked about that part of history. Um, I know that my mom's parents and especially like my grandfather on my mom's side, he grew up in the Dust Bowl and during the depression and lived in Arizona. But I, that's about all, right? Like I didn't know, like now I know what the Dust Bowl like conditions were like. Like she talks about how they lived in a house and the dust storms were so bad and how they were like literally just breathing in dust and they would wear like handkerchiefs on their face to like try and not breathe it in and it would get in the house and it would just be so noisy and so loud and so like like there was like dart raining from the rafters type thing like it was just it sounded awful um and then it also kind of mentioned like why that had happened. So don't know if this is true or not. I'm assuming it is and that the author did her research, but I don't know. Uh, but basically it was because they farmed on land that they didn't like farm it correctly. Um, and they weren't growing things that were like that that land could handle basically. So they had loosened the dirt and so then when the winds came around there was like nothing to keep the dirt like down I guess so when the winds came around and all that it picked up all that dirt and just created this like havoc um so yeah that was interesting um and then it was, she ended up coming so it talked about um, yeah I think I can say that I like trying not to give away too many spoilers. Um, you know, she basically was trying to get out of there. She had a couple kids, blah, blah, blah. They come to California and just kind of like what that life was like and talks a little bit about the work conditions of um, the people working on those like farms. I don't think they're called farms, but I also don't think I'll call them farms um, that were out here and how that worked and how they were underpaid and talks all about that. Um, really enjoyed that by Kristen Hanna. She's supposedly a very good historical fiction author. Um, I think the only other books that I read by her, I think it's only one, was the, oh, what's that one that went to Netflix with the girl from Grey's Anatomy. Dang it. I don't know what it was called, but I didn't, that one was okay. Um, but yeah, I've read a couple books since. Three books. I just finished one last night. I started an audiobook today and I started another book today. So um, be on my Kindle. And then I do have a book that's just been sitting on my currently reading for months and I don't want to DNF it, but I might. I don't have like an audio version because I think audio would be better for me for that but it's just really slow and I think that's 
it's like hard for me to like get into it. It's like really slow. It's hard for me to get into it. And so I was like, maybe it'll be better if I do an audio version of it, but there's not, in the two libraries that I use, there's not an audio version of it. So I just have to either buckle down and read it or DNF it. It's called The Good Mothers and it's about like the women and the mothers um, of the mafia. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see what I do with that one. That one's been sitting on my thing. Um, but I also did want to mention, and I'm contemplating about just opening this after we're done and just reading this instead of what I have on my Kindle. But I did win one of the Goodreads giveaway books. Um, and so shout out and thank you to Goodreads for sending me this book and allowing me to win and St. Martin's Press for contributing this to Goodreads to, to send. Um, it's called Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. Um, and I don't know what this is about. I don't know how it ended up on my DBR, but it did. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to read. Oh, it smells like a book. It's delicious. Um, I'm excited to read this. And like I said, I think I'm literally going to turn off the camera and just start reading this. Um, but I will tell you what the back says. So, um, this Jada Townsend Matthews is the most reviled woman in America after turning down a proposal on a reality dating show. When she comes home to lick her wounds, Jada finds herself working at San Diego's newest cupcake bakery, Sugar Blitz, alongside the uptight owner and professional football player, Donovan Dell. When a reporter mistakenly believes Jada and Donovan are on are an item. They realize they can use the misunderstanding to their advantage to help the bakery and rehabilitate Jada's image. Faking a relationship should be simple, but sometimes love is the most unexpected ingredient. Oh, the fake dating trope. <laughs> I just I know that I love romances, but it, sometimes it's like some of these tropes I'm like Seriously, guys. Like, I think that's why, like, you read rom. Well, at least for me, I like we'll read a couple romances, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I love romances. This is so great. And then I'm like, all right, I'm over it. It's like the same story, just different characters. Like, whatever. Then I go off and I read different things. Then I come back and I'm like, oh my god, I love romance. Why did I stop reading this? <laughs> and the cycle continues. All right. So I'm gonna um go ahead and turn off this camera. I think I'm going to ignore the book that I have on my Kindle and just <laughs> and the other book that I'm potentially going to DNF and just read this book by Jamie Wesley. So again, thank you to Goodreads uh, for, you know, sending me this book and <laughs> letting me, I mean, it's not like they let me win, but I entered the giveaway and I won. So thank you for having the giveaway and to St. Martin's Press for, you know, being a part of that as well. Uh, if you want to see any after the pen spreads or anything like that, you can check out my Instagram at from the peanut gallery. That's P N U T. Uh, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe. And then you could also find various things on my Instagram right now. It's just mostly planner related. I'll maybe put my nails up there soon. I haven't done them yet, so we'll hopefully do that soon. And then uh, every once in a while I post my books and things. So we're, we'll start expanding soon. We're working on it. But yes, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I post a video, which happens to be every Tuesday. And for those who know, I am a tea drinker. <laughs> All right, I think, I think that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> I'm so awkward, and I think it's worse when I have to do face-to-face. -face. I don't know why. But on that note, toodles, noodles.